Can you eat natto too much? What is the appropriate amount of eating natto per day by Natto King? Hi, my name is Hachiaki Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. Okay, so I've been sharing with you about natto in this channel a lot. And in the last video, I shared with you a health benefit of eating natto for lunch or breakfast. Yeah, uh, and, and then the one video before, I shared with you three health benefits of eating natto for dinner. Yeah, so usually it is beneficial to eat natto for dinner, but I sometimes eat natto for lunch because, uh, you know, it, it can be beneficial for lunch too. And then at the end of the last video, I said, how about eating natto both for lunch and dinner? So is it possible? That is something I'd like to talk about today. So two, two videos ago, I shared with you three health benefits of eating natto at night. And these are, one, it helps your blood flow. Two, it helps your skin. Three, it helps prevent catching a cold. And in the last video, I shared with you a health benefit of eating natto for lunch or breakfast. Natto is a wonderful food to break your fast because natto kin, natto bacteria, reach the gut alive without being killed by stomach acid. Right. And then, why not eat natto for both lunch and dinner? Can you eat natto too much? Is there a thing called eating too much natto? Uh, there are some sort of limits to eating natto each day. Yeah. Um, the answer is yes, uh, there is a limit. And you can eat natto too much. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, there was a guy who ate nine packs of natto a day for three days and then he was taken into the hospital, yeah? So you need to be careful. I mean, you know, who eats nine packs of natto? Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, he's one of those people who just had the natto's benefit and he thought it was, it was cool to eat a lot of natto. I mean, there are people like that. Uh, so, you know, I need to be careful when I promote natto, yeah? I mean, I thought most people, uh, you know, have a, a common sense that, you know, you wouldn't eat natto, you know, that much, yeah? But there are people, uh, who do a parentry. So, yeah. So the key here is using a common sense. Moderation is the key. You know, I've been talking about moderation so many times in this video. Yeah. For anything, this isn't only just natto, for anything, too little is not good, too much is not good. Yeah. In moderation, that is the key. Yeah. And the other thing is diversity. Although I call myself natto king and I promote natto and I recommend the people uh, that, uh, you know, you eat natto every day. In fact, I did actually say, you know, eat natto every day, but I, I take it back. Maybe not every day. Yeah. You don't want to eat natto too much. Yeah. Um, what, what I meant was I eat natto every day during the week. So uh, technically speaking, five days a week. And on the weekend, I don't eat natto because the weekend is mTOR activating day. It's a hare period. And I and during the week is a ke period, and that's more autophagy activating period. So, you know, I eat natto because it helps activate autophagy. But on the weekend, I don't eat any, I don't need to eat natto. So five days a week is probably enough. Yeah. Don't eat natto every day. And you want to uh you know diversify your food source do not rely on a single ingredient yeah how however uh superfood it is yeah uh, like a lot of people yeah when they hear it is a superfood like you know avocado or broccoli you know they eat an avocado all the time or they eat broccoli all the time and the same thing can be said about natto but natto is no exception yeah do not eat only natto please diversify your food source, yeah? And the Japanese concept called magoa yasashi ko, yeah? Magoa yasashi, and there's another one called magoa yasashi ko, including grains, yeah? So magoa yasashi ko means, ma means beans, go means nuts and seeds, wa, seaweeds, ya, vegetables, sa, fish, 
sea mushrooms, eat potatoes, and call grains. Yeah, I added call because grains uh, are important too. But often when you talk about mago or yasashi, uh, they don't include grains. Yeah. Okay, so eat mago or yasashi ko, and then diversity is the key. Okay. So natto is only one part of mago or yasashi ko, just the beans. Yeah, there are so many other super food out there. Yeah. Uh, so take advantage of, you know, wide variety of superfood. Yeah, seafoods are great. Mushrooms, like shiitake mushrooms are great. Again, when I say shiitake mushrooms, uh, don't eat only shiitake. Yeah, diversify the food source within each, you know, uh, area. So there are other kinds of mushrooms too. Yeah, don't eat only shiitake. Try to eat as many different kinds of mushrooms as possible. Try to eat many kinds of potatoes, many kinds of vegetables, seaweeds, nuts and seeds, and beans, not only soybeans. Yeah, you have kidney beans and chickpeas and so on. Diversity is the key. Yeah, but that is the bottom line. Okay. And then one thing you need to be careful about natto is, um, if you're taking a medicine called warfarin, which is a medicine to help prevent blood growth, uh, usually it is recommended that you don't eat natto because natto can interfere uh, the effect of this medicine. Uh, the doctor would usually tell you, yeah. For anyone who is taking uh, some kind of medication or who has a certain, you know, medical condition, please consult your doctor first. This isn't only natto for anything because the combination of different nutrients, you know, can, uh, you know, create certain problems unique to that particular disease. So please consult your doctor for it, yeah. Um, but for Regular people, you know, generally like you know, healthy people, you know, natto is a great food. Uh, you know, as I said before, natto has so many health benefits and it is wonderful superfood to eat. So how much natto is an appropriate amount per day? Okay. Two, uh, think about it. You need to know what can happen if you eat too much natto. Now, one thing is puring. Yeah, purine is often a cause of uh, gout. Yeah, and if you observe more than 400 milligrams of purine a day, uh, you can develop gout. Yeah, so you need to be careful. And natto has high amount of purine. So often when people say you shouldn't eat natto too much, they talk about purine. Um, 550 grams of natto contains about 60 milligrams of purine, okay, which is small, you know, compared to 400, yeah. If you eat seven packs of natto, you, maybe you are over 400, but maybe less than six pack should be okay. However, natto isn't the only food that contain purine. Other food contain purine too. So depending on what else you eat in the day, yeah, especially fish and meat contain a high amount of purine. So you need to be careful. Um, for example, sardine, yeah, 100 grams of sardine contain 210 milligrams of purine. And then if you are, you know, into the ikigai diet, you know, you may want to eat sardine because sardine is a great fish. Yeah, uh, plenty of omega-3 fatty acid and small. Therefore, from the concept of Ichibutsu Zen Tai Shoku, it's a great fish to eat. Yeah. And then, uh, but so it is possible that you eat both natto and sardine on the same day. But so you need to kind of calculate the number to see that you don't reach 400 milligrams. Yeah. Um, and meat, especially river. Yeah, probably not many of you eat liver that much. Uh, I, I don't think you are a big fan of liver king if you're watching this video. Yeah, but I mean, you know, if you if you like eating liver uh, for whatever the reasons, then yeah, watch out. Um, depending on the type of liver, uh, for example, beef liver contains 219 milligrams and then 
pork liver contains 284 milligrams, and then chicken liver contains 312 milligrams of purine. Yeah, so you need to make sure that you don't reach 400 milligrams if you are eating natto on top of it. Right. Okay. Uh, so I would say maybe two packs of natto max. Yeah, which means 100 grams. Yeah. So yeah, if you are eating less than 100 grams of natto per day, you don't need to worry about anything. Yeah, you're mostly fine with it. Yeah. Um, so that means it is possible to eat natto both for lunch and dinner. Yeah, you eat a pack of natto for lunch and you eat another pack of natto for dinner. Having said that, yeah, I introduced this book to you before uh, in a video called is, is a Marathon Good for Longevity? Yeah, so it's a book written by a doctor called uh, Amy Kuroda. And she is a triathlon athlete as well, right? So uh, she was, uh, you know, talking about uh, how things like a marathon and some other ultra endurance uh, sport, yeah, can uh, be problematic uh, when it comes to longevity and so on, yeah. But the other thing she mentioned in the book is, do not eat one type of food too much, yeah. However superfood it is yeah um because if you eat one type of food all the time you might develop an allergy for it so you might become allergic to that food if you eat too much yeah uh, that is not only for natto for anything don't eat only one kind too much yeah so especially natto you don't want to become natto you don't want to become become allergic to natto you know and then if you do then you know you're go, you're going to miss a tremendous health benefit so you want to uh, be able to continue eating natto so for this reason too it is better not to eat too much natto um I would say a pack a day, that's a sweet spot. One pack a day, that is enough. Meaning 50 grams of natto per day. Okay. Um, so um, <clears throat> that means uh, this protocol that I shared with you in the last video uh, applies to it, yeah? So when you do a longer fast, meaning over 24 hours, you can eat natto for the first meal to break your fast. But the rest of the time, you can eat natto for dinner, yeah? Um, now, having said that, yeah, there is one more thing to consider, and that is a good news for you. One gram of natto contains 2,300 million natto kin, natto bacteria, yeah? So there's a lot of natto bacteria in one pack of natto, yeah? Now, how much is one gram, okay? So it depends on the size of your natto bean, but I just checked with my natto, just two natto beans was one gram. Yeah, that means if I eat even like one natto bean, it contains like a, yeah, 1,000 million natto kim. That's a lot of amount, right? So all you need to do for lunchtime, if you want to break your fast to, you know, send natto kim to your gut, you just need one or two natto beans. You don't need to eat a whole pack of natto. Yeah. Therefore, I have a new protocol now, right? So when you do a longer fast, you can eat natto for the first meal. And when you do a shorter fast, meaning 16 hours fast or 17 hours fast, you can eat just one or two natto beans for the first meal and eat 50 grams of natto for dinner.
And if you want to know uh, about mago wa yasashi or mago wa yasashi ko, yeah, I wrote about it in detail in the book, The Ikigai Diet, uh, The Secret Japanese Diet to Health and Longevity. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Sachiaki Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. And the Ikigai Biohacking contains a lot more information on intermittent fasting, like Hare Anake intermittent fasting, and you know exercises, mentality, spirituality, and planetary biohacking, and so on. Okay, so please read this book as well. All right, so if you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. Please hit the subscribe button and please leave your comment. Yeah, how much natto do you eat each day? Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Live with your ikigai.